there is a plot that has been placed on our people's head to deceive us about our true abilities. This is why today we gonna meet the Orishas. The Orishas are a spiritual family, one of many. One of many spiritual families that have decided to stay back and help the gods and humanity. You have gods that land here from different planets. They call it birth. But it's not birth. We land here. We arrive here and we enter in bodies. And we go into these bodies and come out as newborn babies. Because the, we, we have a body that's made for us. But we have to go inside of our mommy's body first. We choose our parents. And then we come lay, we fly down here, we ascend down, we descend down here. We don't have a body, we just be energy, spirit and soul. And that energy goes into the womb of our mothers. The moment before conception. Right when the mother's water break, that's when we enter the womb of our mothers. For it is us arriving inside of her womb, which is what causes her water to even break. I'll repeat that for the smoothies in the back of class today. Because, you know, they still be in here, too. It's just you ain't com you can't see the comments right now. They in here. They pay $30 just to get in here and still be smoothies. Government, too. Because it's cheap. It ain't a lot of money. So anybody can pay it and get in just to see what's going on. Right? But the moment before conception, we enter into the womb of our mommies and our mothers. And it, it, is, it, is, it is the entry of our galactic bodies, better known as spirit soul which causes this rupturing of the water. So the water break, that's what causes that. Now we come into this world. Key word, this world. So that means there's many more worlds, right? When they told you you were born into this world, you should have known it was more worlds. Multiple worlds. And to understand how the Orishas work, you must understand these worlds. Most of your Orishas have walked in physical embodiments before. Most of your Orishas have walked in physical embodiments before. Meaning they have had the, the experience of living in this flesh before. Because when it's time for you to leave the planet, if you've done a good job, you get rewards. Some of the rewards is that you can choose where you want to go. In your next in your next in your next life. Do you want to go to another planet? Do you want to go to another universe altogether? Do you want to go create your own planet? Do you want to create your own universe? Do you want to go back home? Because we all come from source, and source is located in a serious star system. Or what that's what they call it. That's what source is located. 
We we neuromelanated beings, better known as African Americans and Africans and Jamaicans and Latinos and Vietnamese people and Filipino people. We 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 come from a very, very, very dark place. In black in fact, our home planet is so dark you you can't see it with the naked eye from this planet. You can see planets that are in our system, like Sirius A and B and C. You can look up in the sky and see those. You don't see Sirius X. Because it's so dark. Triple darkness. Nothing but dark matter energy. That's where we come from. And we 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 have galactic bo galactic bodies. We are luminous beings traveling in armor curbers all throughout the multiverse. We are just beautiful energy, like this picture in the back. That's what we are in our real forms. And you, you experience many different worlds. And if you do a good enough job in this world, you, you go meet with the council. And they'll ask you, what do you want to do? Where do you want to go? Some people elect to come back here, like myself, to help in the war here. Other souls and spirits elect to go other places to help do other things that need to be done in the multiverse. But then you have some spirits and souls where they don't want to go forward, but they want to still they don't want to they don't want to experience another life as a in the flesh here, but they still want to help here. Okay, some souls they don't want to be here again in the flesh, but they still want to help those that still here in the flesh. So they sign up to do just that, and these are being these beings become known as spiritual guides. They serve as mediums to help keep the gods and goddesses that's here in tune with the forces above them and where they came from. These are your spiritual gods. Some of these guys go by the name of guardian angels. Some of these guys go by the name of Orishas. Nevertheless, it's the spiritual deities, guides. Very intelligent, very powerful, energetic fields. Very powerful beings. And when you talk about the Orishas specifically, most of them have already walked and lived this life before. So, who better to help guide you and connect you other than beings who have lived the life you are living? You've never... This this is your this is even though you've you must some of us have been here before, you have a lot of us who've never been before. We work both ways. You got some of us who've been here before, you got some of us who ain't never been here before. Most of the souls that's coming back now have been here before. A few times. You see what I'm saying? But you still got souls that come that this day first time here. They ancient souls, they not new souls, because you got new souls too. These are freshly created souls back home on Series X. You got new souls to come. New souls go to every go everywhere. But you got some souls. You got some souls that are are new. I mean, are 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 old. But this their first time here. These souls are old, but this is their first time here. So you have a lot going on. But the Orishas are a very powerful spiritual family, not to be played with. Very powerful family um, of, of spiritual deities. That's why I got this blue candle burning. That's why this blue candle is burning. Because this is the third eye. The third eye. The third eye. 
truth. Spiritual truth. It's also going to help you get spiritual truth. Today. The Orishas act as guides. They are here to guide you. They are here to help protect you from negative forces as well. Remember, Zeus got his army. Don't forget, Zeus got his army, right? So, Zeus has, Zeus, which is Satan, he don't have what we have, y'all. We are, we have deities. When it's a positive force, it's a deity. We have deities. So it's spiritual deities. Those are the good guys. The good spirits. The, the, the good spirits who elect to help us. But then guess what? We also got the bad ones. And those are entities, negative forces. You get what I'm saying? Negative forces that try to that try to hinder you. Negative forces that try to hinder you. Spiritual entities are different. The deities. Spiritual entities are different than deities, family. Stay with me. We, we talking nice and slow about this, y'all. So everybody can be on the same page. Spiritual entities are different than deities. Me, late night munchies. Spiritual entities are different than deities. Y'all sleep on these, easy bang. Now I'm thirty repeating that for a reason. I'm steady repeating that for a reason. I need you to grasp it. Spiritual entities are different than deities. Orishas would represent spiritual entities. I mean, spiritual deities. The spiritual entities are are your malevolent beings, like the fallen angels that work for Zeus or Satan, as you know. So, what's some examples of a of the energy of spiritual deities? When spiritual deities are around you, like this flame. See, I had a flame standing. That means it's a lot of spiritual deities and high-powered angels and ancestors around right now. Around me. Around this energy field. And why the flame thing is so high like that. 
Flames react to energy fields. All right. Fire, candle flames re react to energy fields. That's what you must know. So if it's spiritual, light a candle. If it's low, that means there's not a high spiritual presence in the room around you. That's why the flames are low. Okay? If you want to know the energy that's around you, the best thing to do is light a candle. Facts. Fuck what somebody's talking about. If you want to know somebody's energy, light a candle around. Light a candle around them and then watch how they react to the candle. And then watch how the flame of the candle reacts to them. When the spiritual entities, entities, I keep saying entities, I don't want to confuse y'all. When spiritual deities are around you, you also can feel it. You feel it. It's going to be a loving vibration and you're going to feel protected. Because spiritual deities are positive spirits. they gods. Are you or not? But they elected to live as mediums in between the spiritual realm and the physical realm. I repeat, they elected to live as mediums between the spiritual realm and the physical realm. These are spiritual deities. Right? You have many, 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 many ancestors physically and spiritually that you've never heard of before in your life. And there's no words for them. There's no words for them because you they've never been talked about here. So you name it like the Orishas and then you get to talk about the Egyptian gods and then the Mayan gods and you go look at different tribes in Africa and they gods. All those gods existed and still do. And you can channel any of their energy fields. Any of them. However, you have cosmic elders and ancestors who because you never heard, because you never heard of them, you can't even channel them because you don't know where to start. You never heard of them. It's a lot. Just like with the Orishas. It's not just today I'm gonna to talk to y'all about the most popular nine Orishas that everybody heard of. But it's way more than nine. It's way more than nine Orishas. But you only hear about like nine of them. Just like it's more spiritual families than just the Orishas. But you mostly only hear about the Orishas. Why? Because they cut you off from your information. The oppressor deal.
anybody that practices Ifa or magic or hoodoo or voodoo in any sorts of way or Santeria will tell you just how powerful the Orishas is. And then well. Anybody will tell you that. Now, the reason they don't tell us about the Orishas, I mean other spiritual families, is because look at what people do with the Orishas. People start using that energy to make things happen. This is where voodoo and hoodoo start kicking in, right? And it's most powerful, right? Because you're going to, because you're using your energy and your intent, but because you're in the physical realm, you want to connect to your family that's in the spiritual realm. Because the spiritual realm overrides physical realm. Spiritual law overrides man-made law. Because it was first. You get what I'm saying? It was first. I hope y'all listening. All right? Spiritual law override man law because it was first. I know y'all probably be looking like God be fucking shit up. God damn right I do. But I'm saying everything I'm saying for a reason. Spiritual law overrides man-made law. So what does that mean? That means if they try to come harm you in the physical, I'm talking about these oppressors, because they are the ones harming us in this physical, right? They took our land, our planet, and they want to keep the they want to keep us stuck in the physical density so that we can't rise again. Okay. If your our oppressor come, say your oppressor come to harm you, but you tap into spiritual law. So let's say your oppressors feel like you're wrong. They can say in the physical realm all day, you wrong and you guilty. Right? But if you in tune with your spiritual family, they can will override what anybody is saying here in the physical. Because they only judging you off your intent. You feel me? They're judging you off your intent. Spiritual law will always be righteous. Ain't no stealing in the ashes. Ain't no lying. Ain't no manipulation. You get what I'm saying? It's none of that. It's none of it. Spiritual law is fair. Physical law is corrupt. Physical lying about if you're guilty or innocent. This shit about who got the most money to get the best lawyer. Who got the best relationships with the judge. That's not right. That's not real justice. That's not cosmic justice. The justice here is, hey... If I'm a lawyer, and my client raped and killed somebody, I got to still go out here and fight for my on my client's behalf 
that raped and killed somebody. Even if I know he did it, I'm going to fight for him to see him free just so I can win to get my check. Is that fair? I repeat that. In physical law, this lawyer will fight to vanilla for a client that he know raped and killed this person. He's still going to sit there and fight to try to make the man look innocent. Or make her look innocent. Same thing with the DA. The DA can know you innocent. And their job is to still make you look guilty. Just so they can win and get a check. We talk about man-made law now. In man-made law... The police do the fuck that the police can shoot us, kill us, run in our house, do whatever the fuck they want to do to us. Niggas get paid, leave. We talking about physical law. In spiritual law, that would never happen. It's all about righteousness and true cosmic justice. Okay? So, why am I saying all this? Because if you're tapped in with your spiritual team, they're not going to let nothing happen to you. Because spiritual law is stronger than physical law. Everything in the physical was created from the spiritual anyway. Remember. As above, so below. Four phases of matter. Four phases of matter. Solids, liquids, gases, what? Plasma energy. As above, so below. Remember, this is the slowest vibration. We come from above, the plasma energy realms. We are at a, a higher vibration. That's what we come from before we get back here. We descend down to this realm. So, Spiritual law will always override physical law. And see, if most of our black people knew that, they wouldn't be scared of the law here. And they know if you knew that, you would be scared of the police and the law here, neither. So that's why you only know about the Orishas. Because just knowing about them is enough for you to do what the fuck you need to do and them to not even bother us ever again. Facts. Just you knowing about the Orishas because when you bring it in the Orishas, you're dealing with a spiritual family. You're dealing with spiritual law. You're dealing with spiritual law. So if you go, if you so you got all these different Orishas, and if you go to them for their help for something, and you're righteous, they're going to help you. They are spiritual guides. And spiritual law override physical law. So that means they can be trying to. A person could try to do harm to you, but if you go to your spirit team, your spirit team gonna block all that because spiritual law over override physical law, or anything going on in this physical world. Y'all get? Do y'all get the point of me breaking all this down? This is what I'm saying on this. I want.
don't see how it is. Mm hmm. Spiritual law overrides physical law. So, the plan from our oppressors was to cut us off from that connection to our spiritual team, our spiritual families. They hid it from us and took it from us and gave us the Bible. And got us worshiping a white Jesus. Mm -mm. These chips good as hell. Bear with me. The whole reason they gave you religion, man, is because you come from a spiritual background. So they had to give you something. They removed your spiritual connection to your cosmic family and your galactic families and replaced it with religion. In religion, literally mocks and water down everything that spirituality is about. In spirituality, we meditated. We used fire and the elements to create, and we meditated with our palms out or different mudras. And religion, same shit. And spirituality, and our spiritual family, well, anciently, anciently, we meditated. Mood you thought it, right? Then, religion came, and you still, they still gave you a form, they still have made you meditate, but they called it prayer. And made you get on your knees. And close your hands. In meditation, you don't put your head down. You keep it up. You want whatever, so you can be one with everything around you, centered. In religion, they make you put your head down. Close your eyes. Put your head down. Now call upon them. Call upon my name. And what is his name? Satan. Think about it. Think about it. Made you put your head down, get on your knees, and he made you call upon what? His name. That's how you look at it. Call upon my name. Put your head down. Get on your knees. Which is, you got eyes in your knees too. But he got you sitting on them too. Eyes in your knees and your hands closed. Bow your head, now, now call upon me. Who is the me that he had you called upon? Jesus. But Jesus is only Spanish for Jesus. Right? And who were the Spaniards? Jesus is only Spanish for Jesus. Now where... Did Spanish come from? Spain. The Spaniards. And what color were they? Human beings. Working for Zeus. So. We had an ancient connect to a, we had a spiritual system intact. And this was the root of our power. Growing our locks out, wearing our crystals, meditating, 
using certain incantations, vibrations, playing music. We always play music and dance. That's all a part of magic. We always use the colors. We always use the rainbow. We are the rainbow. We every color. We are the rainbow. The rainbow is, you no, know, the, the, the colors of the rainbow is merely a reflection of our cosmic rays. Because we made it. We know the rainbows are stargates, though. That leads to Asgard. We know that. But I'm saying the colors of a rain of the rainbow come from our cosmic vibrations, the way we really look. We got all those colors in us. So when you talk about the Orishas. That's a spiritual thing. That's getting you back on track with your, with nature and how you were. They like to give the Orishas to just to the Yoruba tradition. Now, who? What's the Yoruba tribe? The Yoruba tribe. It was a tribe. It's a tribe in Africa. You can look them up. What they call Africa. We know Africa. It's connected to America. I told you that already, but that's what they call it, though. They call it Africa to divide us. Like, they call this America to divide us. Remember, none of this land had titles at first. We was all just connected. All one. All right? Only thing dividing us now is titles. Once again, titles, 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 title, title, titles. The titles are powerful. Titles are powerful. Titles literally got us walking around thinking that we not the same. It got us turning our back on our brothers and sisters. We like it's not us. So we don't care. Because the title has us believing it's not us. All right. So. The Africans, if you want to call them that, once again, this is still us. because These are just titles. Have a tribe called the Yoruba tribe, which is once again still the gods and goddesses, just another title. And the Yoruba tribe, they basically held on to a lot of our ancient traditions. So one of the ancient traditions they were able to hold on to was the gateway and the connection way to spiritually stay in tune with 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 a, with a, with a spiritual, with a powerful spiritual family that would be able to help and intervene and help us move along in this physical plane. And that and that spiritual family is called the Orishas. So this is why when they when you when they speak of the Orishas, they always gonna give credit to the Yoruba tribe, which is I get why they do that, all right? But they will though. They gonna tell you the Yoruba tribe. They gonna credit the Yuri the Orishas and their story with the Yoruba tribe. But in actuality, this is our stories, regardless. All right, the Orishas been been around for a long time. They've been around since we brought life. Onto this planet. Onto this plane. Onto this planet. So as we brought intelligent life here, they've been around. The Orishas. But they serve as spiritual guys. They're here to help protect you. They're here to be, their energy is to be used to fight against our oppressors. Because you can call the Orishas in to help you at any time. But each Orisha has their own story. Every Orisha have their own story. Every Orisha have their own things they like and they don't like. Every Orisha have their own colors, their own crystals, their own offerings they take. Each and every Orisha has their own personality. Because they just as real as me and you. This is why you have to know how to go to them. You have to know how to deal with them. You have to be respectful. You have to have the purest intent, Right? Now, it's many different Orishas, all right? Well, let's talk about the, the, the top nine. We're going to start with Oladumare. Oladumare is the god, the overseer, or the god that sent the Orishas down to be the medium between the physical planes and the spiritual planes in this, in this, in this, world, called, in this world called of Tiamat, or Planet Kai. Or Atlantis, because we're on Atlantis. 
Olodumare, once again, is the one that sent the, the, the Orishas down here to serve as, to be a physical, uh, a spiritual medium for all up and coming guys and all up and coming souls that was living in this, in this, in this reality down, I mean, in this physical embodiment to keep them connected to source. All right. Ifa is, you might have heard of Ifa. Ifa is the study of what we're talking about now. You know, the Orishas and their stories and voodoo, hoodoo, magic, and how to call them in. That's all a part of Ifa. Divination work, tarot re and that's a part of Ifa. So. Ifa deals with any form of spiritual work. If somebody was to ask me in my Ifa, yes, I would be considered Ifa because that's what I was sent here to do. This spiritual work. Okay, so I'm going to talk about these nine Orishas, not including, excluding Oladumare. All right. But I just told you who he was. Ola Dumare is the Orisha. I mean, he's not Orisha. Ola Dumare is the one that brought the Orishas down here. Next would be Eshu. Eshu is the divine messenger. Also known as Alegba or Papa Legba. He is the gatekeeper. He is also a trickster, can be a trickster, he likes to test you to make sure that you are loyal to what you are saying to him. Very powerful. Also, the, he, he helps transport spirits through the underworld, if you want to call it that, or the, or the dead through the spiritual world. All right? He creates he create graves for the living. Meaning that when they get close to your time, Eshu is the one that starts to prepare, you know, that 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 opening for you to enter in between to leave the physical realm and walk into the spiritual realm. He's the gatekeeper. He's also the first one you would go to before practicing any ritual or spell work at Shu. You could do spell work and rituals without calling in the Orishas, but they're not gonna be as powerful as if you was to call them in and ask them to work with you. Okay? Now, I'm not going to go too deep into it, you know, ask you, because I'll talk about, I'm going to make a lecture about each and every single Orisha on his own. I just want you to meet these Orishas. All right. Ogun will be next because he clears the path for you. All right. Um, I want to get too many details about Ogun, but he clears the path, with, path for you. He's a warrior Orisha. Same as Eshu. They are warrior Orishas. All right. Um, if somebody's bothering you, you would go to warrior reaches to, 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 to protect you. If somebody's trying to harm you or, or anything, you would go to them. You would call them in. Uh, Ochosi is also a warrior Risha. He's the, he's the brother of Ogun and Eshu. Very, very powerful energies. Masculine, strong energies that are very protective. He's a hunter. Like I said, I'll go into more detail about them in their own individual videos. But the next one would be Obatala, who is also could be looked at as like Oludumare or father of the Orishas sometimes. Um, like they say, he's the father or could be considered the father of the Orishas. Now you got different stories that will tell you he's not the father. Some will tell you he's the father. I'm just letting you know from a spiritual aspect, he's he could be sitter, he could almost be on the same, you know, um, level as Odumare, even though he is not. All right. The next one is Orula or Oromelia. All right. Um, very another very powerful Risha deals with wisdom and divination work. Another Orisha we have is um, 
that we had named it uh, uh, Shango. Shango, very, very, very powerful Orisha. He's actually rumored to be the most powerful of the of the Orishas. Um, brother of Ogun, all right. Uh, God of lightning, God of thunder, all right. Um, these are very powerful energies when you're dealing with these when you're dealing with these Orishas. Because the energy is the energy. It's not a joke. It, I mean, it's to be called upon and used upon when needed, not to be abused. These are spiritual deities, protectors. They had to give you. They, even if you ask them for knowledge, they'll give it to you. Ask them a question about something, they'll give you an answer. So the next one will be Oya. Mama Oya. Okay. Goddess of, of lightning. Very, very powerful. Also, the goddess of the wind. Wind is one of her more powerful elements. Okay? We got Osun. Deals a lot with beauty. To kind of think about Aphrodite and Greek mythology. Except for Osun is a little more, a little more, probably a little more powerful because she has soothing energy. Very powerful energy. Very powerful Energy definitely great at healing at healing and love and family. That's the energies you want to call in. You want to call in those soon energy. Um, you got Yimye. Goddess of the seas. Very powerful goddess. Uh, she's actually rumored to be the mother of some of the Orishas I just named. Now, I'm going to stop there with naming Orishas because I don't want to confuse you. I want to make a lecture for each and every single Orisha. I want to make a lecture for each and every single Orisha. So, I'm just saying their name. But what you better know about the Orishas is this. The most powerful thing about the Orishas is how you are able to channel their energy to get things done that you need done, to get your will done. Alright? However, you got people that'll do spell work on people for no reason, just to have their way with them. And when you try to do that, now, now you're wrong. And you got people that do that. They'll go to the Orishas to try to get them involved and stuff like that too. And that's where you're wrong. That's where you go wrong at. All right. These are spiritual. Once again, these are spiritual. These are spiritual deities. They're like genies. Whatever you ask them to do, they're going to about do. This is why you need to be righteous if you're trying to use those riches that use their help to go hurt somebody or make them fall in love with you or make them do what you want them to do. Make them call you. Make them. Because people do all type of stuff like that. And guess what? Because they're just merely energy, they're going to go do what you ask them to do. However, if they get to the individual you sent them to, and they, that, that individual is protected or that individual is in the wrong, that energy you send is not going to harm that person. It's going to come right back to you. So that's why it's dangerous. That's why it's dangerous. They didn't hear this from us for so long, y'all. All the Orishas ought to, be, ought to receive offerings. Every Orisha had their own day, too. That you, that you would go to them and ask them to work for you. And they will work for you more on their day than they will on days that's not their day. Just like you're supposed to go out in the sun. When you want to channel the Orisha energy or your ancestors' energy, it's best to try to channel that in the sun or in the heat. Not at night when it's cold or in the moon or some shit. But we need to learn about the Orishas and channeling that energy and going to them because we can use it in this war. We can channel Ogun's energy, Okosi, Eshu, Obatala, Orula, Oya, Shango, Yemiye, Osun, and many more. 
Orishas. It's a spiritual family. The Orishas come from the Oyo Empire. The Oyo, O-Y-O. The Oyo Empire is an inter... An intermediate plane within within the planet. So the Oyo Empire sits in between our realm and Asgard. You know what I'm saying? It's an inter... It's a... You know... A interdimensional plane. So the grind that little black smoke. You ever been smoking some shit that black smoke come over? Not black smoke, but the good. When you smoking ashes. But yeah, the, the Orishas come from a um. They exist. They are spiritual guys, but they are from the Oyo Empire. The Oyo Empire is a, the Oyo Empire is a, like I say, it's an intermediate realm. So it's it exists within our planet, but it's in between realms, though. So it's in between planet. It's in between Atlantis and Asgard. We own Atlantis. You got Asgard. These are realms. Remember, it's nine realms here. Each planet has nine realms, or nine different planes of existence. But in between certain planets, you have other planets, like the Oyo Empire. And that's where the Orishas come from. You know what I'm saying? That's where they reside at, rather. So, that plane is right, right below us. So, this is why it's more also easy to channel their energy, too. Because it's not, it's not like they, they, they off on another planet or somewhere. Like we got ancestors not on this planet, too. No, the Orisha's right here on the planet with us. When people using magic and voodoo and hoodoo, they always bring Orishas in. True practitioners of who? True practitioners of, of, of hoodoo, voodoo, santeria, whatever you want to call it. It's really all our. It's really all our. It's really science, though. They it like voodoo, hoodoo. That was just evil names put on it. It's really science. And it's our culture. It's what we do. We heal ourselves. We always use spells and rituals to manifest and create things. We did. How did the pyramids get built? How do you think shit was getting moved around this motherfucker? It wasn't just us moving it physically. We did that too, but we was using a lot of intent, a lot of natural abilities, a lot of super, what they would, what they would call now supernatural abilities. Nothing is supernatural about me lighting this candle and talking the entire time into the candle. And then saying that we will rise in frequency. That we will connect to these different spiritual families and we'll respect them and we won't abuse them. Because if you can go to these spiritual families to help enhance your natural abilities here. <coughs> yeah, baby. You can go to these spiritual families to help enhance your natural abilities here. Just like people go to the Orishas and these spiritual families and ask to bring their, to get their boyfriend or their girlfriend back. You can ask to enhance your eyesight to, to make your genetics, to tap into that genetic that will make you run faster. But you got all them genetics in you anyway. All them genes in you anyway. Every gene is already in you. Anything, any possibility you want to do, it lies within you as a, as a gene. That's what, you, that's what your genetics are, unlimited programs that allow you to do things that you can't even, that you would never imagine uh, 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 we could do. All right. But you have to remember who you are. You got people that scared of their reason, they scared of pop a leg, but they scared of their shoes, so they'll never go to them. But you going to them to ask them to help you ma um, 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 manifest your intent. These are they, they are there to guide and protect you. They're not gonna hurt you. They're not gonna hurt you at all. So this is why I said we gotta meet the Orishas. You know what I'm saying? We gotta you gotta understand. 
that we got to get back to making altars, ancestor altars. Altars to certain spiritual families like any Orisha you're working with. Because that's our nature. The Mauritians look like you. They are you. That You can't relate to that white Jesus. Nor can he help to enhance you. Further to take you into a deeper connection with self. Like the Orishas can. Until you get to that level where you strong enough to match the going to source. The Orishas can go to source for you. And still get stuff done on your behalf. You know what I'm saying? The Orishas can still go to source and get stuff done for you on your behalf. I'm trying to get you to see the power of these spiritual families. Ogun was used in the Haitian Revolution. They summoned his energy. That's how powerful it is, man. But we got classes coming up on each and every single Orisha. And I'm going to get way deeper. But when, for those of you who want to learn about magic, you want to you learn about each and every Orisha, how to do the offerings, all of that. Because you can manifest your spell work, your spells and everything else without the Orishas. But when you pull them in, it's a different ball game. Because now you're pulling in spiritual help to help what you're doing physically. And I'm going to leave y'all on that. See y'all in class Thursday. And we got classes coming up about every, I'm going to do a video on every single Orisha, the big nine. See y'all in class Thursday. Now we rise. One.